Hi everyone, in this uh, quick video I'm going to go over a sample CFA problem in Excel that will show you how an investor's portfolio choice or investment choice is influenced by their degree of risk aversion. So suppose an investor has a utility function that is increasing in expected return and decreasing in variance of returns as follows. So you're given a utility function which is expressed as expected return minus half into a times sigma square, where a denotes the investor's degree of risk aversion. Okay, so before we proceed, I want to highlight a couple of things. Notice that the utility that the, that the investor is deriving from an investment is an increasing function of expected return. So all else equal, if the expected return is going to go up, then the utility is going to go up, which makes sense. Uh, at the same time, if the standard deviation or the variance of the returns goes up, so the variance of the returns is represented by sigma square, well, then that has a dampening effect on a utility because we're going to be subtracting this big number. And so this is basically representative of the idea that investors like returns or expected returns, and they don't like risk, where risk is being captured by sigma square. And the other thing that is important here is how risk averse we are, which is represented by this variable A. So for a given level of risk or a given level of standard deviation or variance, the higher is the value of A, the more risk averse we will be. And therefore, the more or the higher this negative number will be that we will be subtracting, which will decrease our utility. Now, you're also given the following information on four different investments. So there are four different investments. You're told the expected returns on those. You're also given information on their standard deviation. This is standard deviation or just sigma, whereas this is sigma square, which is basically variance. The first question that is being asked is, which investment would you prefer if you were risk averse with A equal to four? So the more risk averse you are, the more you dislike risk, the higher is going to be the magnitude of A. Uh, and in this case, we're being asked like, what happens if A equals four? The other question is, what happens if you are risk neutral with A equal to zero? Notice with A equal to zero, all of this basically becomes equal to zero. And that is our way of saying that utility is purely a function of expected return. So let's do parts uh, A and B first. So if I jot down the magnitude of A, so if I write down A here, and uh, at first we're saying that A equals four. So with the value of A, with the value of expected return, and with the value of sigma, and therefore sigma square, I can figure out the utility that the investor would get from each of these investments. So after formatting this column to make it look well, nice and pretty, I can calculate utility using this utility function. So for instance, from the first investment, the utility that I will get will be equal to the expected return, which is 12% minus half, which is 0 0.5, multiplied by the magnitude of A. And I'm going to lock this cell reference because I don't want to move from this. And then I'm going to multiply this by the standard deviation, but I want to square it. So I'm going to raise this to the power 2. And so when I do this calculation, I get negative 6%. And in fact, I can populate all the other cells using the same formula as well. So for example, over here, I'm basically using expected return for investment two, the standard deviation of investment two, but the same coefficient or the same degree of risk aversion, which is four. And so what I get here is basically the utility that the investor would get for each of these investments. As you can see, the utility is the highest for investment three in this case, where it is basically equal to 16%. And so if the investor were risk averse with a degree of risk aversion of four, as represented by the value of A, then uh, they would prefer investment three. Now, if this same number was zero instead, then our investor would actually prefer investment four, because as you can see over there, the utility is the highest. And this shouldn't surprise you because when the investor is risk averse, then all they really care about is the expected return. They'll just go with the investment which offers the highest expected return. Standard deviation or risk won't really factor into their 
mathematics, so to speak. And so no surprises that over there, the investment of choice is investment four. Part C of the question asks, what does the variable A essentially represent in the formula? Variable A is uh, representative of the investor's required rate of return. No, it's more a measure of the degree of risk aversion. So that's not quite true. A is higher when the investors demand a greater a risk premium as compensation for a given increase in the variance of returns. This is uh, a long way of saying the same thing. If an investor is risk averse, that means that they don't like risk, which means that for a given level of risk, they would need to be compensated with a much higher rate of return or risk premium, if you will. So yes, this is true. The higher is the value of A, the higher is the risk premium that they would require as compensation for a given increase in the variance of returns. Number three asks whether A in the formula represents the investor's preference for one unit of return per four units of risk. No, that's not true because, uh, well, there's no foundation for why it should be per four units of risk. A can take on different values, zero, one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And so this option is neither here nor there. So there you go, a very simple problem in Excel that shows you how an investor's degree of risk aversion combined with expected return and variance influences their utility and hence their investment choice. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.